Let's talk about stoichiometry. Here's the essential question right at the top of your page. How do we use mole ratios as conversion factors? Well, let's figure out what stoichiometry is. Stoichiometry is just a scientific method to calculate quantities in a reaction. So here's a fictitious reaction. It's actually written more of like a recipe like you'd find in the kitchen, and that's by design. In chemistry, a chemical reaction is a lot like a recipe you would have in a kitchen. Here we have two graham cracker squares, one marshmallow, one chocolate piece, and that equates to one s'more after our recipe is finished. Now, what's a mole ratio? A mole ratio is just the quantities of each of the ingredients and the quantity of the product. And these quantities are written as coefficients. So notice that there's two graham cracker squares, there's one chocolate piece, there's one marshmallow, and we get one gram and one s'more from this. Now, chemical reactions have to follow this ratio. We can scale it up and down all we want. In fact, let's put a bunch of different ingredients in here. Now, when we do this, some of our substance may limit our reaction. They may limit the quantities and others might be unreacted excess. For example, take a look here. Our graham crackers are limiting the amount of s'mores we can get. We only have six graham cracker pieces, but we have lots of extra chocolate and marshmallows. Well, those chocolate and marshmallows are going to be unreacted excess in our reaction and our graham cracker squares are going to get all used up. So our products that we're going to make according to the ratio of these things is we're only going to get up three s'mores in this process. Now, a key idea behind mole ratios is that they can be used as conversion factors. Let's take a look at the last slide in a different way. Here are those six graham crackers. We know that those graham crackers limit the amount of product that we're going to make. It's what we have less of than anything else. So we can use this information and molar conversions and this conversion factors and those mole ratios to be able to determine how many products we can get very simply. To do that, we do need our recipe because the recipe has the ratio of graham crackers to chocolate, to, to s'mores. And we're going to use that in our conversion process. So starting with our unit of graham crackers, we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And that conversion factor comes from the recipe ratio. It's two graham cracker squares, which we're going to put on the bottom, and to one s'more, which we're going to put on the top. If we take our six graham crackers and multiply it by one half or one over two, we're going to figure out how many s'mores we're going to get from this reaction. Now, this is a very simple ex explanation. Let's go ahead and try this with something a little bit more complicated in an actual reaction. So here's our first example. If we had 4.21 moles of potassium hydroxide, how many moles of sulfuric acid would you need to complete this reaction? This is a stoichiometry equation because we're comparing the quantities of different parts of a reaction. Now, I do have a real big hint for you. You might want to go and review how to write and balance reaction equations. We've been doing this for a long time, so hopefully you're good at it. But if not, you might want to go find some practice and definitely get good at it because there's important things we need to do. I'm going to go through this one really quickly, but I'm not going to explain too much. Here are our ingredients. These are our reactants, potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, as it says in our example. Now, I know that this is a double replacement reaction, so I'm going to go ahead and double replace these reactants to make different to make these products. Now I do this whole step because I need to eventually figure out what the coefficients are after we balance the reaction. These are our mole ratio and is part of our recipe for this reaction. And it's going to help us figure out the answer to our problem. Now what's the problem again? Well, it says we have a certain amount of potassium hydroxide, and it wants to know how much sulfuric acid we're going to need. Because this is a quantity to quantity comparison, we're going to use stoichiometry to do so. And stoichiometry is just doing unit conversions. So let's go ahead and pull out our unit conversion process. So what are we starting with? We're starting with 4.21 moles of potassium hydroxide. And we're trying to figure out how much sulfuric acid we need. So we need a conversion factor. Well, our conversion factor, as we said before, are our mole ratios. It's a two to one ratio. Specifically, I'm going to put one sulfuric acid on top because that's what we're going to. And we're trying to cancel out potassium hydroxide. So I'm gonna put two moles of potassium hydroxide on the bottom. So this is our ratio from our recipe. 
So if we lay it out like this, notice moles of potassium hydroxide are able to cancel out, and we're left with our final unit, which is moles of sulfuric acid. This is how you would calculate this using a calculator. And this is the answer we would get. This is still a 2 to 1 ratio. All right, let's check out the, a second example problem. Here it says if you react all 2.105 moles of sulfuric acid, how many moles of water are we going to get in the end? So we're kind of continuing our problem before. This time it says we have sulfuric acid that's in our problem, and it wants to know how much water we're going to end up with in the end. Well, I'm going to show you this process again, but I'm going to let you know right now that I'm going to do it incorrectly. I'm going to do it in a way that I see students do often, which is often a big mistake. So bear with me. This is going to be an incorrect method. So I'm going to start by putting 2.105 of my starting amount. Then I'm going to use my conversion factor. And I know that my conversion factor is one sulfuric acid to two water. So I'm going to plug that into my conversion factor area right here. Now, when I calculate it out, this is the answer that I get. But like I said before, this answer is incorrect. Let me show you why. And that leads me to a second really big hint. Don't just write the number. Please include units and molecules to account for any errors when you're doing these types of unit conversions. Let me show you what happens when I actually include the units. Do you see a problem here? Well, by putting the conversion factor with 1 to 2, notice that my moles of sulfuric acid do not cancel out with my moles of water. My conversion factor was incorrectly written. I actually need to flip it so 2 is over 1 because I want to be able to cancel out sulfuric acid. So this is a wrong formula. I'm going to have to start all over from the beginning and make sure it's correct. So let's do that. Let's start with our starting material, 2.105 moles of sulfuric acid. And notice I wrote not only the unit of moles, but also the molecule of sulfuric acid. Now for my conversion factor, I know it's a 1 to 2 ratio, but I need to make sure that I put my ratios in the correct spot. I want to be able to cancel out sulfuric acid, so sulfuric acid should be on the bottom in terms of the ratio, and my moles of water, my ratio of water, should be on the top. By doing this, I'm going to be able to get my correct answer, which is 4.21 moles of water. All right, I have one more example to go through, and then I have one that you guys are going to practice yourself. So in this problem, it says, based on the previous problem, how many moles of potassium sulfate will you also get? So we're going to go ahead and look at what we have and what we got. And this is kind of a confusing problem because it didn't tell us what to start with. In the previous problem, we knew we had 2.105 moles of sulfuric acid, and we calculated how much we got of water. So which one of those do we actually start with? Well, I'm going to let you know that it doesn't matter. Because we're doing stoichiometry, all of these are part of the ratio. So we can really start with either one as long as we've calculated things out correctly and we're following that ratio. I'm going to show you that I can do either one. And again, the whole point is we're trying to figure out how much we're going to get of potassium sulfate. So here they are. Here is our moles of sulfuric acid that we started out with. And here is our moles of water that we learned in the last problem how much we got. That's part of a 1 to 2 ratio. So let's go ahead and use both of them as a starting material and figure out how much potassium sulfate we're going to get. Again, I could have used either one, but I'm going to show you both is going to work. So I'm going to multiply by moles of sulfuric acid by a ratio. Now the ratio for this problem is one to one. It's one mole of sulfuric acid to one mole of potassium sulfate. Notice that my units are written in a specific way so that they cancel out in this problem. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my bottom problem. I have 4.21 moles of water. I'm going to multiply it by a ratio. This time it's a two to one ratio. Again, making sure that my two is on bottom because I need my moles of water to cancel out and I'm trying to get into moles of potassium sulfate, so that's on top. If I finalize these problems, I'm going to get the same answer for both. And that's because stoichiometry, if done correctly, just make sure that all ratios are being obeyed. All right, I have one more problem for you. Pause this video and see if you can figure it out yourself. It's the best way to learn. Did you pause? Did you try it out? I hope you did. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out the answer to this problem together. So it's saying here that we have a certain amount of iron 2 nitrate, and it wants to know how much aluminum we need to react to this problem. So we're going to need this ratio of 3 to 2. 
Let's first start with out with what we have in our problem. We have 1.25 moles of iron 2 nitrate. Now we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. Do you know how we should set it up? Should it be 2 thirds or should it be 3 halves? Well, if you said 2 thirds, you'd be correct because we need to make sure that iron 2 nitrate is canceled out from the top of this part of the formula to the bottom of this fraction over here. So if we plug this into a calculator like this, we're going to end up with our answer, 0.83 moles of aluminum. Again, this is a 3 to 2 ratio, and we can use unit, the unit conversion process to figure that out. All right, that's the end of our notes. Good luck.